Welcome friends, welcome back to the hangar. As you can see, I'm maybe halfway through stripping the paint off of, off of the plane. Um, it's a slow process. I'm taking a little bit of a break. A bunch of parts came in for the engine and Chris has a break in his schedule. So we're gonna take the plane over to his shop today and we're gonna put on a new alternator, a new starter and a new EMAG. So I'm gonna get this loaded up. I'm going to attach it to a tug and drag it over to his shop. And the, the, the spinner came too. But I think I'd like to leave it off until I've got it stripped. Yeah, for sure. Uh, look, we need the prop on here to, uh, um, uh, to time it and do that. Okay. Uh, but once we get that done, I, I'm thinking I might just pull the prop off for you. Leave it off and, until leave I'm done. Off. Yeah, and we'll just make sure, then we make sure the spinner fits everything. Like do a little fitment and yep. then we'll just leave it off to the side. That way you don't have to worry about covering it up and everything like that. Cool. Yeah, that, that'd make it so much easier. Okay, so. And then did you, um, did you look into, we're putting on the E-Mag. Did you look into replacing the other mag with something a little bit newer? Um, we can make a call on that too. Okay. Um, the, that might be a little trickier, but we can ask, uh, well, the same guy. Yeah. When they, uh, like rather than overhaul the mags, oftentimes they, because it even says in the, in the manual for the mag that it's cheaper to replace it than it is to overhaul it. Yep. And so they often take them and he'll have a pile of weight and go back in for cores. And they don't care what the core is, they just need one back. And so we might be able to swap that out for a core. So the same guy will ask him that question. For, for a, a newer for one or a lighter like a one? Slick, yeah, 62, yeah. 70 or whatever. Okay. Cheaper. So we're taking off the starter and then probably this magneto this mag over here this mag over here yeah. okay so we're going to replace those two um with brand new and there should be a significant weight savings huh uh, i think so yeah for sure i Excellent. think that thing's like 13 pounds 14 pounds and i think the new one's like eight yeah and then down under here is um a generator and we're going to replace that with an alternator now the crazy thing about a magneto um, they were invented in the 1850s. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, there's only, the only things left that still use a magneto are airplanes. And what's the other thing? Uh, chainsaws. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. And gas lawnmowers. Because there's no other electrical charging system, so it has to be a self-contained ignition yeah. system. Um, so I'll, I'm going to cut in a little industrial film from the 1930s that explains the inner workings of a magneto because I don't think I could really figure it out. There's something about the magnet spins instead of the armature spinning. The, the, the magnet spins in the field and it creates the, the charge. The charge goes into the primary coil and when the, the points open, it, or it goes into one coil and then another coil to change the, the, up the voltage, basically transforming it. And then when the point opens, the charge drops field breaks and off it goes and repeat something like that something <laughs> like that the <laughs> i think i think you got a bunch of parts in there and they turn and they turn <laughs> and there's and there's so there's two on an aircraft so that um if one fails the other is still operating in theory yeah. and one fires the spark plugs at the top of the cylinder and one fires the spark plugs at the bottom of the cylinder, which I can't find right now, but they're in there. It's an efficiency thing too, right? I could draw you a little diagram of it. So the double spark gives you... It, 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 here, I'll give you a little diagram. It, it's, so if you got one spark plug, okay, so here's our piston, right? And we got one spark plug, and you would think it, it, it's a flame front, yep. right? So it comes down and it would push, if I was perfectly circular, let's say it pushes there, yep. right? And whatever so we put two sparks in the same situation and they flame out like this right? Ah. right like this and what happens at the end of the day is the push on the cylinder becomes wider more efficient it's more efficient okay learning stuff there you go so these companies are all owned by the same uh, the, the 
so it's amalgamation after amalgamation after amalgamation. They've all come together. Yeah, and, it's, and it's all hard so much. Julie was really laughing at me when I'm ordering this stuff because she's like, so how does the one for the, how come the, the, the I'll just, just say the EMAG, how come the EMAG for the, the home built guy is a third of the cost uh, of the exact same part for you. For the exact you. same part. Is exact it? same part. And I said, well, it's because it comes with a piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> so here are the parts we're going to put in today. This is a Surefly EMAG, and we can only put one in at a time. And why is that, Chris? Is that because this draws power from the charging system rather than creating its own? I would think so, yeah. So if something goes wrong with the electrical system, you still get your magneto that's independent. That's independent. So this runs off of the charging system or runs off the battery. If that goes down, this goes down, but we still have one old school magneto keeping the whole thing going. This is an alternator, which we're going to replace the generator with. Um, this is AC, right? This puts out power. Uh, it would be, well, alternating, yeah, AC, like an alternator, so alternating current, and then it's rectified in the uh, diodes and stuff like that in the uh, internal rectifier. But the great thing about an alternator is that it starts generating power right at the beginning, right? Very slow, yeah, yeah. It's at lower RPMs. Where the generator, you have to get the RPM up before it starts to generate electricity. Cut and in, before it cuts in is the terminology. Before it cuts in. Yeah, it'd be a cut in. <laughs> Technical. And then a starter. And I think the main purpose of changing the starter is uh, weight saving. <coughs> yes, for sure. And that one will be like your prop will turn twice as fast. That's got solid magnets, whereas the other one's got ma magnetic shoes in it. <clears throat> So it, it should start it with should, the fewer, engine should spin faster with fewer turns. Yeah. Okay. So this is the old starter and this is the Ooh. magneto that we're going to replace and a new wiring harness too, or leads. What are they called? Are they called? Harness. It's a harness. Okay. Delco Remy. And this one is manufactured by Case. Um, you might know Case because they're tractors. But is there much you need to do to fit the new ones in? The they... fitment is the easy part. It's the wiring we're going to be playing with. Okay. So that's the. This is where the this is where the starter goes in, right? Yeah. And yeah. so it would basically would turn. The gear here is on the crankshaft. Yep. Right, and so it turns the crankshaft. Catches that one and turns it. And then the magneto is down here, and somehow it it spins the magneto. There's something in there that yeah, I can't no, see. It, it's geared. Yeah. It's geared. Okay. I'm trying to find pictures of this plane. I'd like to know what it looked like in 1960. Yeah. What the what the color scheme was, and if it was painted all the way around, or if it was partly polished, maybe. That's a difference of 17 pounds. There you go. You so need some more burgers. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we took 17 pounds out, which will go a long way um, to, to sort of drop off some of the other things that I want to do. And it's off the front too, which is, is better for efficiency. Okay. Like it's the teeter totter. So the tail's pushing down. Yep. Right, to keep you level. So you take weight off the front, the tail needs to push down less to hold it level, hold it level. which means there's less drag on the tail, which means you should go slightly faster, like a quarter of a mile an hour. <laughs> so we lost 17 pounds off the front, which apparently is great, and, and we're going to gain a quarter of an hour. A quarter, um, a quarter of a mile an hour. A quarter of a mile an hour. I'm not speed. guaranteeing that. So what's going on here now, Chris? This is, uh, we're going to mount up the regulator. So that's the voltage regulator? Yep. So we'll get it up there and I'm just leaving the other one hooked up until I, we get the figure on the wires. Okay. And so this will be what controls it. And so these wires will still be, some of them will still be in play. Okay. So like this is all solid state and this is state of the art. And this is the this is... first one ever invented. It's uh, if we take the cover off, can we get the cover off? It's kind of interesting. In there is a bunch of points and vibrating and, yep. it, and it was all done mechanically. It's kind of phenomenal what they would, you know, 
Like nowadays, we look at something like that, and it's all solid state. And so back in the day, when the you know the mechanics were really mechanics, they didn't just put in parts on those. <laughs> <laughs> they would go into something like this and make all these vibrations. Back right. when you could fix things. Yeah, when you were allowed to fix it. I, I know how to fix things, but it costs so much money. It's easier. It's cheaper to replace everything. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. But see, so they'll have. Oh, come on. Yeah. And so see that they would adjust all those points. There'd be little see on, on this side the little adjustments oh, for them, and they literally sit there and they vibrate, and the, and that's how you know. So one of them will. So be it's a mag it's a magnet and a coil and and yeah. and little points on the. Yeah, and so one of them vibrates to control uh, voltage. The other one vibrates to control amperage. Uh, what was the third one? The third one, I can't remember. Maybe rectifying a little bit or something like that. And so you go in there and you see someone's written some numbers on it. So, so whoever was in there adjusting it was figuring out point gap and everything like that like, and and nowadays that is maybe they might read about it in school uh but pff, i i've got a guy in barry who i'd take it to and say here figure this out and he's an old guy he's gonna retire no one's gonna take his spot and someday no one will ever know how those things were ever set up uh, that's that's um that's like almost nikola tesla type electronic. exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tesla figured it out and then they put it on an airplane. There you go. It's a well thought out unit. Like I, now I can access the bolts. Mm -hmm. Before I was kind of fighting with them. Oops. The, the bolts on the, on the last one were almost captive in a race, weren't they? Yeah, they were like they're it, all I could do was like you do a little turn, then you flip the wrench over, and you do another turn. The yep. offset of the wrench does it. If you're an engineer and you would know how many degrees you can f the mechanic with on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, this one's already set up to drive. Uh, there was, and so I'm just wondering, like if it goes on this shaft. Right, and then it kicks in, it's gonna kick into that gear. See the complexity of, so, let's have a look at that. Not only is it way less, it works with one hand. Look but the there's complexity the complexity of that, of that one. Versus this one. Yeah. You know, and so, uh, I'm not sure, free, yeah, free wheels backwards. So it may never pop in and out. I'm not sure how that works. Whereas this one had to, uh, you would go with the lever. Oh, yes. Right? And, and so the that, lever and would engage the gear. And, and, then, and then this and then it, would hit the power which would then in turn spin this gear and it's engaged. So it could be like this. Whereas, and it probably has no, uh, it'll spin a little bit. And then when you let, when you let go of the handle inside the cockpit, that, this would that kick back kicks out. back out. And okay. this would, and that and disconnects that and so everything's good. I, I, I don't think that even slides in and out. It no, just, you know, it just, just, it's freewheel. Yeah, very neat. It turns out we actually have to cut inside the engine and, yeah, and, and yeah. modify a shaft inside. So it's, it's causing a little bit of, uh, <laughs> Chris is a little bit anxious. So, so we've, it comes with this plastic piece. And so that plastic piece fits over a shaft that's inside. And this is the guide and we have to cut this shaft off. And of course that shaft, you know, is attached to the rest of the engine. And you don't want to kind of, you don't want to get it wrong. So, Okay, so we have to cut off two and a half inches? Is that what it's? It's 2.6, it's like. 2.6. So, I don't know if I need to do it. One, two, six minimum. So we can go a little longer, just to be sure. That's almost the whole thing, isn't it? It is. It is like it's at 2.6. It's right back to the plastic. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we'll just get in there. The die grinder, I guess. I think I got my little Dremel tool. Practice cutting on the real one. Okay.
much we got in. Take these off now. That was... Imagine trying to do that with that piece of cardboard. No, that would have been horrible. Yeah. Um, there's no way that you could catch all of the. Well, and what if like you, like I was knocking it off at the end because just because there wasn't enough room for the Dremel to get underneath yeah. it. But if that thing fell in the engine. There's your next two hours of work. You gotta figure trying, out how to, to get that bastard back out of there. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Okay. There. Assuming the back edge of that is pretty straight, that should be a reasonably straight cut. Like that's kind of surprising me. Like, gutter? Yeah. Like how would you have got it straight with a piece of cardboard and that angle with you know You wouldn't have. Yeah. I'm dangerous to myself now. Not just others? No, not just others. A new starter. Though. New starter, uh, new mag, new alternator. How old is this point? 1960. 60. These are all so much smaller. There's now there's room, room to room, work. Room to work back here. <laughs> well, because it's all new, we'll never have to work here again. So even though the other stuff was sort of newer, it was still steam. Yeah, yeah. This, this, and now we're going. Wah, it's got some sort of magnetic field around it. That's okay. It says you know. So this is a Surefly Emag or a Magneto or what do they call it? Uh, Electronic yeah. ignition module. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've done one on the home built. See, they've got a port here for manifold pressure. Yep. And so it's not approved on the certified aircraft as of yet. They probably will long term to do timing advance on. Uh, from the manifold pressure. From the manifold pressure. So just like your cars of today and even like boat motors from the, you know, the 70s. 70s. <laughs> and you would advance and yeah. you would get this timing advance as you did it, right? Yep. So so on the home belts, they're doing the timing advance, right? To the point where when they're doing their mag checks, they have little or no mag drop, yep. right? Because they're, they've adjusted the timing accordingly. For us, we get to stick at old, uh, what is it, 26 degrees or whatever the number is on this one. And so whatever. We've got internal settings. So even though this is advanced, it, it really is uh, probably in the automotive world, 1970s, 1960s. Yeah, probably. I would yeah. Think so, yeah. so it's not advanced. It's, it's advanced for me. <laughs> it's advanced. It's advanced for this type of aircraft, but in the in the real world, it's not that advanced. So, Surefly. <laughs> this is the old mag and it's got a gear that interfaces with a large gear inside the engine. This is what's on the Surefly, and it's not quite the same. So, calling technical support to see what we can, uh, see if they can help us. Thank you for calling Surefly Electronic Ignition. Press one for sales, press two for tech support, or hold. But what do we do then? Uh, like according to the eligibility that was in O three hundred C, I just I just looked it up on the on the eligibility chart. It's our eligible for the our engine, and so without this knowledge in hand beforehand, we wind up buying and purchasing a unit, and now we've got it half opened up and realize that we can't use it. Where do we go with that? So, uh, I can get that water back if you call back. Okay, and and to what end? So the, uh, okay, so what do we do? Package it up and send it back to the manufacturer? Okay. We Air bought it from Aircraft Spruce. Aircraft Spruce. Aircraft Spruce. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> you think that one would text to call me back, she didn't take my phone number. Okay, so, <laughs> um, I would have to say this is an epic fail on the <laughs> on the side of Surefly, yeah. they tell us um, in all of their literature that this unit fits fits on a Continental O300C, which is the engine that's in this aircraft. 
It's in their paperwork. Model eligibility. Model eligibility, yeah, O300C. And yet we find out now that it's not, it does not work on this engine. Right here, O300C. O300C. Use the installation instructions. It's simply and so there's installation instructions, everything to put it on this engine, except they're now telling us from technical support that it doesn't fit. It oh, doesn't. We, we can put it on, it just won't turn. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, and that it, uh, you know, you, I, you might have heard what she said. It's going to be at least a year or more before they figure out how to make it work on this engine. So we bought an electronic ignition. We took the engine apart. And we can't put it on. And we start again. Put the mag back on. So we put the old magneto back on and... Uh, Sure fly, come on, get it together. That's, that just makes me angry to no end. Nothing against case, tractors, and their magnetos. Anything we might have said earlier that was bad about them. Yeah, I, I, I... Well, yeah, and I mean, and it's, and it's, not that I, it's not that I think that they're necessarily bad, I just think that they're a little bit outdated, and I was really looking forward to having an electronic ignition on this aircraft. But... Maybe in two years. Maybe in two years. <laughs> Um, but they work. I mean, we've had, we've been in this plane and the engine runs, they work, they're, they're fine. They're back on. Not happy. Better already. <laughs> you aren't going to paint this, eh? No. No. So, one of the things I've noticed, Chris, is yeah. that everywhere on the plane, there's safety wire. Yeah. Safety wire, safety wire, safety wire. The big spinny thing on the front doesn't get safety doesn't wire. Doesn't get safety uh, wire. Well, this one, so this one's got bolts through with lock nuts. Okay. Um, this one will just have bolts going through it, yep. and it'll be safety wired together. So it's the lock nuts on the back yeah. that... that... So there, there's always the safety device. Okay. But, or always. Like, so we oil uh, the oil filter, which, you know, it doesn't take much torque. If you over torque it a little bit, it's hard to get off. Yep. And, uh, but it gets lock wire, but the carburetor doesn't. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> there's some sense in it, and there's some not nonsense. And so I imagine this gets torqued to a very specific yeah, value. So this is one of those episodes where there isn't going to be a giant payoff. I would have loved to have ended this with starting up the engine, showing that the starter worked and that the alternator worked and that it was generating enough power. Well, we got to the point where we were starting to feed wire through the firewall um, to the bus bar and realized that because I have decided on a new panel configuration, we're going to be pulling out the entire panel. We're going to be rewiring everything. We're going to be changing all of the switches. We're going to be changing the fuses to circuit breakers and installing a full glass Dynon panel that it seemed kind of silly to wire this in and solder to the, uh, to the bus bar just in order to start it. And that it, we would be farther ahead, much farther ahead if we just left it at this point 
and wired it all in at once when we're doing all of the wiring. So, um, in future episodes, spoiler alert, we will be pulling out the panel and doing a full Dynon install. But until we get to that point, because I've, you know, parts are on order and it takes a little while to get everything in here and plan a panel, um, I will be working on the interior. I'm going to be painting the interior, um, finishing it, putting in an extended baggage and some cargo nets. So that work will continue in the next episode. And then in the upcoming episodes, I'm going to be putting on new strobe lights and nav lights. So running all of that wiring in is going to happen soon. And I've also been testing out different polishes to see how I can polish the aluminum on the outside of this. And I've, uh, I've been testing a couple things and they work really well. I think we can get this skin gleaming in a future episode. So all of that's coming up. Um, I want to thank you for uh, following along on this journey. I want to thank you for leaving your comments and your suggestions. I try to read everything that I can. And, uh, and I'm pretty happy that the plane is moving forward as it is, even though I haven't really been able to fly it yet. And all of this work means that it's going to spend another two to three months um, here in the hangar. Uh, unflyable as we work through all of the changes and improvements. So stick with us. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon.